Hey there, folks. Uh, so I have this backlight kit here. Uh, I believe this is one of the newer ones from Cloud Game Store. Um, I suppose they always are newer when I'm looking at them, though. Anyway, let's uh, let's take a look and see what we've got. I'm fairly certain this is an updated version, the backlight kit that I just very, very recently did a video on uh, with this DMG. I'll, I'll link that in, in the description and later on in the video we can compare a little bit what's, what's changed and what's different because the LCD itself, if I can grab this Jesus thing, is the same LCD between these two backlight kits. Um, but I don't, I don't remember if, well the front board definitely looks different. I can see this one, the old one doesn't have the diode array on the back for the buttons, whereas this new one does. Um, the old one just has individual diodes for each of the buttons. Uh, in the shell though, it's pretty hard to see any uh, explicit differences. Oh, there's a capacitor on the old one that isn't there on the new one. I don't know. We'll see. Good stuff. Um, not too much to the kit. You've got the converter board itself, which is the front board for the DMG. It's not uh, like previous kits where you have a button board and then another board that plugs into this. Nope, you just get the one thing, um, which is pretty good in my opinion. Um, you've got the ribbon cable for connecting this board to the DMG itself, a bracket for presumably holding the screen in, and a speaker. It's nice that they come with a speaker. Uh, you notice this isn't attached, but soldering is not required because there's just straight a uh, connector on there. Um, and then we've got our lens again, uh, presumably sized for the screen and um, positioned a little bit over to the right instead of perfectly center, uh, but that should match up with the bracket that's included. Unfortunately, it's not centered, but it is what it is. Now now it's going to look a little bit more like an SP, much like the original version. Uh, and tonight's donor, get this set aside, it's going to be this bad boy, which is an amalgam of parts from a previous build. Um, don't mind the shell, we'll be swapping that out. Um, I just wanted to slap this together so that I had an example of what a OEM DMG is going to look like. Uh, this way I can do some power usage tests and get a before and after of this thing. Uh, but this is the only working screen assembly that I could find that had a speaker in it. And I didn't really want to put a speaker in for testing this out. This is not the correct cart, but as you can see it is working perfectly fine. And you can see one of the, the amazing features of the original screen on the DMG, um, how freaking blurry it is. It just turns into a pea soup of pixels whenever there's any movement on the screen because there's just so much, um, so much ghosting. It's kind of gross. Uh, but anyway, we'll probably fix that. I've got two Pokemon Silvers at my desk for reasons. This is the one I usually test with, I think. Okay, that was just batteries. Cool, let's uh, get this swapped out. I've already taken the front half off. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Uh, the old model DMGs, like the original release, uh, those are JIS, but the newer models, um, and especially the Play It Loud versions, are um, tri-wing screws. Tri-wing. Um, try point screws. Um, why? Why screws? But, eh. I didn't need to unplug that. I got ahead of myself because I forgot to test the power. Uh, I hate plugging these stupid things in. This can 
connector is literally the worst. Right, that looks good. Power supply already set to 4.8, 4.2. It was set to 4.8. Now it's set to 4.8. Okay. So we can use that for negative. And then for positive, I'm thinking probably just hold this on. So it'll be a little bit easier. New game! Oh no! This cart's not e any better either. The battery finally died. Okay, well, then rather go through that, we'll just use the other one. Well, that's an easy fix for that one at least. I don't know why I don't have screws in any of these, don't mind me. Alright, so with the same game, I almost always test these things with. Um, I think I usually do Pokemon Yellow with DMGs, but heck if I know where that is. Um, oops. In the overworld, slightly different part of the game where we usually are at 4.8 volts, it is pulling between 56 and 61, ooh, between 55 and 64 milliamps, um, which I believe that's about what we would expect out of a DMG. Maybe a little on the high side, but it's an old console. All right, now let's get the new screen swapped in. Try that out, because we always want to test this before doing a full install. Look at that, that's nice and clean. Alright, so... I guess that gets plugged in, pins down. To be honest, it probably doesn't matter. This connector looks like it has pins on both sides. Uh, but I am going to do it pins down. That way I can plug this side in, pins up, like the original connector was configured. Um, like I said, it should work either way, but in case there's an issue, this helps us rule things out for troubleshooting. And then the screen goes in here, just like that. Ah, this is one of those reverse flat flex cables. I'll show you more in just a second, but we flip up the back so that we can plug it in to the front. Oh, and even better, that's as deep as it goes. And then we press down the back again. And we should be good. Let me clip that on. There, no. Okay. Ah! Somehow my cart needed reseating. Is that going to work for me? Worked for me with previous builds. Yeah, buddy. There's enough capacitance 
uh, on DMGs that I can usually just use my thumb to hit the button. Oh, I forgot to plug the speaker in. Wouldn't want to skew the results by accident. Okay, so default brightness, whatever the heck this is, um, 4.8 volts, same game, same place. It is pulling 149 to about 160 milliamps. Um, I guess that's about a three times increase. And then we have this thing. Does it do anything? Ah, it does. Fascinating. I don't know why I just changed languages. <laughs> I can't read any of that. Um, it's not neat. There's an OSD. There's two languages supported. You've got brightness here. So let's crank the brightness. That changed the numbers to 205 to 212 milliamps. And then let's sync it all the way down. And now we're measuring 80 to 92 milliamps, which is actually very, very good. Oh, all the way up to 91, 80 to 91. Either way, that's still, um, what, if stock was about 60 milliamps and this is 90, you know, that's, that's an easy sell, I think, in my book. Um, anyway, I think I'll leave that at about 50. Uh, position. Oh, look at that! We can adjust where the uh, screen shows up on the display. That's convenient. That is actually really nice compared to the original one. Uh, we have pixel grid options just on or off, it looks like. Uh, it doesn't seem to affect power usage, uh, but it does change the effect of brightness. I know you can see this in the video because my camera is not automatically adjusting because I'm switching back and forth too much. Uh, but you can see as I turn them on, the screen gets significantly darker. Uh, the reason for that is because the pixel grid is just a vertical and horizontal row of black pixels in between each and every normal pixel. What that means is the backlight itself has to be set to a higher level to pass as much the same level of light through the LCD itself. Um, so while that doesn't affect the power usage, that feature specifically, if you were to adjust your brightness to match and then turn it on, um, it would significantly increase the power usage because your brightness is set higher. Um, oh, it looks like we can also change the colors. Ooh, and there's presets. How neat. So it looks like up and down doesn't... Oh, it does. Okay, it's just slow. I just wasn't being patient enough. Uh, so when you're outside the OSD, up and down is just a quick adjust for brightness. This is really nice. I like that. The controls are very intuitive. Um, the brightness adjust seemed a little bit slow at first, but I think once you get used to it, it's not really an issue. Uh, press and hold to get into the OSD. Presumably press and hold to exit the OSD without having to cycle through all that. No. Were it so easy. Okay, so we just gotta click through it, I guess. Oh! Click through it till you get to that last bit and then hit up to save and exit. Um, just hitting the button doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know what I would expect it to do, but there you go. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, we know it works, so let's go ahead and continue with the install. I am going to unplug it from the DMG side just to make my life significantly easier. And then before continuing, I want to discuss this flat flex cable uh, this flat flex connector just because this one's a little bit atypical compared to usual ones uh, but even still it's particularly trip uh, tricky tricky good lord um, 
So on normal flat flex connectors, the front where the ribbon inserts will lift up or slide out so that you can insert the ribbon and then the bale, that's the part that lifts up, uh, will wedge the ribbon in place. These are called ZIF connectors because ZIF is an acronym, stands for zero insertion force. That means when it's open, there should be zero force required to insert the flat flex cable. Unlike these connectors, these are not zero insertion force connectors, but they are still flat flex connectors. But anyway, to operate this one, like I said, the bale is in the back. You just flip that up, usually with a fingernail. A little bit tight though. And then we can just pull that in and out. And then install is the opposite of removal. We have the bale already flipped up. I'm gonna slide that cable in there and then just press it down. I am using two fingers for this because this one's a little bit tight and I worry that using one finger, you know, I might bend or break the bale. Uh, so two fingers lets me distribute the force a little bit more evenly and reduce the chances of damage. Um, now I guess eh, I'll figure out the um, the bracket once we've got the shell ready, but. Actually, never mind. It's that easy. The screen just kind of sits in the bracket and then you screw the bracket in. Easy peasy. Alright. Good lord. Look. Oh, I was charging a second set of batteries. One of my batteries is bad. I wanted to uh, put the other, put this thing side by side, but uh, I don't, I don't think we'll need to do that. Let me get the housing. Uh, I'm going to be using a Cloud Game Store housing um, because I think it'll be a lot easier if we don't have to mix and match housing with Kit Maker. And also, I have this housing and it looks awesome, and I want to use it. Um, I need to go find the accessories that it, I'm fairly certain it's supposed to come with though. So hang on one sec. There we go. I knew exactly where they were. I just forgot to grab them in advance for the video. All right, so if you grab one of these shells and forgive me, I don't think this particular color is available anymore. Uh, at least by the time this video goes up. Um, I guess they were having problems consistently getting the finish solid. Like, I haven't actually touched the back of this thing, but there's already marks on it. Uh, it's probably not coming out very well on screen. Um, personally, it doesn't really bother me because if I were to use this thing, it's going to get marked up anyway, but I can see why that's an issue, so I don't really blame them for stopping work on this thing. Um, the other color that they have replaced it with is this uh, white pearl, I believe. Um, or maybe they got rid of this one, and now they're doing the sparkles. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but if either of those colors aren't available, sorry. I hope I didn't get your heart set on either of them. Uh, good buttons. Oh, there they are. I guess let's do a little bit of sorting. I want to save the long screws, six of them, for screwing the two shell halves together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, good, I get two link port covers. Uh, oh, and there's an extra long one that'll set aside. Oh, two extra long ones. I'm not sure if there's just a variance in the screw lengths or if I got two different length screws. So these ones are a little bit longer. 
two, three. There's three different lengths. <laughs> okay. Just those four are longer though. So. It's possible that's one, two, three. No, nope, that's more than four. JK. Uh, maybe those are for the shielding? Yeah, I think they're for the shielding. That's what I'm going to use them for anyway. This thing does not want to go in without scratching the shell. Oh, never mind. Scratched it anyway. <laughs> Alright, where is it? So four screws for the shielding and because we're screwing it into plastic, we just need to make the screws tug uh, snug <laughs> uh, and then back them off a quarter turn. Um, if they're too tight, they will crack the housing um, and it'd be a shame to do that for housing that looks like this. Uh, now I need to get the actual console transferred over. It is now occurring to me that the four long screws were likely for the console, not the shielding. But we'll see what happens. We're definitely not reusing these screws. It doesn't come out if there's a game inserted. <laughs> And I think that's all we need, because I'm not going to reuse the plastic bits and bobs. Um, I had a lot of fitment issues when I did this shell originally, and I don't necessarily want to try reusing a switch that might not fit. So I'm going to not do that. Especially since I have a brand new one that should fit. I mean, I guess the old one should have fit too, but whatever. Are these long enough? Nope, no chance. All right, so I was definitely supposed to use the long screws for not the shielding. My apologies, guys. But we learn together. Something, something, I mess up so you don't have to. Hmm. Also, I suppose another trick I will show uh, for installing screws specifically, um, plastic injection molded parts, the screw bosses are never pre-threaded. That's just, that's not possible to do with the plastic injection molding process. It is possible for the factory to thread screws in after the fact and thread it, um, but that's an extra step and that's expensive. Um, however, if you are threading into a pre-threaded uh, screw hole, run the screw in reverse until it clicks. I'll do that again. And 
and then run it forward. What we're doing when we run it in reverse is we're letting the threads drop into place so that we're not re-threading the same screw boss over and over and stripping the threads out. Um, plastic housings, you can re-thread the screw bosses at least once, you know, after they've already been threaded, usually. Sometimes you don't even get the uh, first thread in, but either way, don't, don't take the chance if you don't have to. Um, I find that doing that, you know, making sure that my screws always slip into the threads, um, ensures that I can take my shells apart almost as many times as I want. I, I shut off that pocket color a while back. Um, I've been in and out of this thing like 15 times. That means all of the screws have, uh, been removed and reinstalled like 15 times. Alright, back that up a quarter turn. Alright, getting there. Set that aside. We will focus on the front. I've still got to reinstall those. All right, so helps if we put that in the correct orientation. I knew something was weird about that. Okay. And then it just fits like that and you screw it together. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so this should work with funny playing shells. In fact, this should work with any shells, um, except for, well, yeah. It'll work with these type of shells, but just be aware that they're missing the top screw post because of the, uh, different IPS kits that it's designed for. Um, it'll work with those, you just have to omit, omit these two screws. Uh, but this bracket is really designed for OEM type shells, um, either actually OEM or replacement designed to look like OEM. Um, I think having the four screw posts is gonna help significantly with the uh, security of that. Uh, I'm thinking, let's do this. Let's do lens first. So much plastic waste, man. first, then I can flip that around. Oh no, you're gonna do it to me, aren't you? Ugh. The film on these things is so unreasonably difficult to remove. Because the tabs just peel off without actually removing the film. Be exceptionally careful if you try and do that with tweezers. I just scratched the corner of the LCD. Um, it's probably not gonna matter, but it is still unfortunate. Okay, I can rest that in the bracket, and I can come back here. And uh, since it's transparent, I can just see everything <laughs> and uh, seat that. If it weren't transparent, I could just like hold it under over my head and peek under, I guess. But... Nice thing for the camera.
these speakers are aftermarket replacements and I am fairly certain that they are rated to take a amplified signal. At the very least, the Game Boy Advance ones are. I don't know about DMG. I just assume it's the same, but I guess don't quote me on that, just in case. There we go. I knew that didn't seem right, but I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Oh no. Well, that one's stripped. I think these screws are entirely too short. I'm only getting like two threads of engagement. Or it feels like I'm only getting like two threads of engagement. I suppose once they're all in and once this thing is assembled it won't matter, but... Maybe it was just that one that was too short. No. Oof. I wonder if it's all four of these bracket screws that are going to be like that. Yeah, because that one's stripped out too. So I've got two unpopulated screw posts because they're both stripped, and that leaves me with one extra screw, I guess? I'm sure I've got some extra DMG size screws in here. No, those are too long. can almost definitely get these from the original BMG. Just slightly longer screws. All right, so those will work just fine. And for reference, these screws are approximately the same length as the long screws that I needed to install the um, board. see they're just a hair longer actually that one's a little on the short side oh there we go that's that's what I used on the other screw hole not quite as long as the long screws. Oh, but very close. Hmm. 
maybe this one's a hair on the long side. Yeah, it is, but it's also under the lens, so not too big a deal. Otherwise, I think I think we're good. The other ones are, are nice and stable. And I'll sort the rest of my screws later. Green plugged in. And just like that. ribbon cable does need to be bent just make sure it's not sticking out too far on the top um, also probably a good idea to make sure that it's not running over any uh, sharp um, soldered pins maybe it's worthwhile to spend a few minutes getting the uh, board itself nice and cleaned up. What is not fitting together? So just the ribbon. There we go. I creased the ribbon, now it seems to fit a little bit better. I wonder if those ones even needed to be long screws. I forgot that miss messed up. Yeah, you can probably get creative with the um, allocation of your screws if you don't have any extras like I did and you have the same problem I did. Because these two battery compartment screws, you can get away with much shorter screws in there. Maybe even the rest of these too. I don't know, I haven't been tightening them down, I've just been starting the... Getting them threaded and then moving on to the next one. Bob Gianti. Oh, we gotta put the uh, battery thingers in still. Uh, so it should come with three of them. Two are gonna be the same. The two same ones get slipped into the bottom. And then the different one gets slipped into the top. If you're using a lithium-ion battery mod, which I don't recommend, uh, especially not with these shells, um, you should not install those. 
but with these shells you would also have to cut out those ribs in the battery compartment. Look at that, it's pretty darn good looking, I think. Buttons all seem fine. Controls are still working. Cool, so I guess let's run through some tests real quick. And that's about all we got. So obviously this thing is a fingerprint magnet. I'm sure you knew that. I will clean off the screen though. Let's do uh, I'm looking for Mercury, there we go. So I want the flickering bars test. Um, I've been through this spiel dozens of times, hundreds of times probably at this point. Uh, but what's happening is when the S hits the left hand side of the screen, the LCD or the DMG is issuing an LCD reset command, uh, which means the um, screen, wherever it currently is displaying the frame data, it throws out whatever it has and starts moving on to the next frame. Uh, because as you know, screens work by displaying the pixel data one by one, column by column, row by row until the entire screen is done. And then it does that approximately 60 times every single second. Uh, so in the case of these LCDs, You've got, you know, it starts at the top left and then fills out the entire row, then moves down to the next row, top left, so on and so forth, until eventually it does the whole thing. Uh, but Game Boys would do something called a um, LCD reset, where in case it's like in the middle of a screen, in the middle of a frame, it would just throw out all that data and move on to the next one. Uh, the purpose behind that was for faster paced action games. Um, you could save a little bit of latency if, if an action were to happen while it was filling out the screen. That's less of a problem with um, these newer type screens that have such faster pixel response times, but on the original screen that was just that blurry mess, this, this helped significantly. Um, at the very least, it let some de developers hide some clever hacks. Um, this screen isn't doing the best with this test, uh, in fact, there are quite a few other screens that do this test a lot better. Um, but this isn't bad. It could be better, sure, but it isn't bad. Uh, the things I'm looking for to make sure it's not doing, I want to make sure it's not uh, like dropping frames after the fact, or it's not uh, introducing the, what they call the jelly scrolling effect. Um, both of those were significant problems with older kits. I'm not seeing any of that here, uh, but it does seem to sort of glitch out for a couple frames after the fact. Uh, so you'll, you'll probably notice that in some games, um, like Pokemon Pinball, for example. Um, I suppose I didn't have to do that, I could have used the button. Uh, well, Pokemon Pinball's the one I know of offhand. Mm. Let's try zelda.gb. Do a couple more tests with that. Mm 
The buttons actually feel really good. The D-pad, it's tighter than it normally is on a DMG, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think the D-pad on DMGs is a little bit too loose normally. Uh, I don't know if that's the shell, the membrane, or the buttons, but either way, I'm okay with it. All right, so what I wanted to test with this particular game uh, was this guy's chain. So the Game Boy has no way of displaying transparency. Remember the original screen, how it has a terrible pixel response time? Well, devs took advantage of that fact to simulate transparency by flickering sprites on and off pretty much as quickly as they could. Uh, in this particular case, because this screen is a lot more responsive than the original screen, you see that flickering. Um, it's not necessarily broken or anything like that, it's just kind of an unfortunate side effect that uh, with, with the original screens, this kind of dev trickery was hidden, but with these upgraded screens, you see that kind of stuff. Um, so some other kits uh, do introduce a frame buffer and then a frame averaging function, which will try and mask this, um, this effect. This kit does not do that. Uh, I don't know that there are any kits for the original Game Boy that do that. I think pretty much all of them are exclusive to Game Boy Advance at the moment. But, eh. It doesn't break anything, it's just, a. Uh, you should probably be aware that that's going to happen in some games. Uh, depending on the games you play, you might literally never see that, but if you play a game called Zass, you will see it constantly. Let's pull that up for an example, too. Uh, no. Ah, uh, there it is. It's called Zass, but it has a whole... It has a whole name. <laughs> the label itself on the cart just says Zass, though. And so does the title screen, so I, I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, the entire background of this game uses that transparency effect, which means the whole time you're playing this game, the screen is just nonstop flickering. So unfortunately, this game is, for better or worse, broken with this kit. Um, it's certainly playable, but I wouldn't call it a good experience. But anyway, this is worst case scenario. Most games are better than that. Um, otherwise, I think I don't think I have much else to say. Uh, let me fire up one more game just so I don't leave on that horrifying example. Um, but otherwise, this is this is a pretty good kit. I'm pretty happy with it. I I especially like these shells. I've always been a fan of the Cloud Game Store, especially the transparency. Uh, the nice glossy effect instead of having that textured surface. Um, I know it's a fingerprint magnet, but I just think it looks so much better that I don't care. Um, but these these shells do genuinely feel really good, and it did fit reasonably well once I got that ribbon cable flexed and um, flattened out. I gave it a nice crease and everything seems to be good. Oh, I am where I usually am in this game. I don't know why I was confused about that. But yeah, if your DMG is a Pokemon machine, you're not going to have any problems with this screen. It looks great. Ooh. There are presets. Look at that. It's not actually in color. What it's doing is it's, um... The DMG supports four colors. White, black, light gray, and dark gray. Uh, so what this is doing is it's coloring the light and dark gray to pink and red, respectively. But 
actually kind of looks good. I like it. Uh, but those are the presets anyway. Um, yeah, I think that's all I've got. Um, oh, nope, one more thing I should discuss. How do I get into the menu? These are all the quick sets. There we go. Position, how's my position? That's eh, fine. There you go. So you can change the colors that way. Actually, kind of dig that too. Oh. Yeah, it's neat. It looks kind of like it's... Well, I mean, it is backlight, but it looks kind of like one of the old-style LED backlights, but like with a blue backlight. Anyway, you, you can you can play with it. It's pretty neat. Um, I'm fairly certain all of the original Game Boy kits support something like this at this point. But yeah, pretty neat stuff. Uh, so. I will go ahead and throw links to all of the stuff that I used here today. Um, shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for providing the housing and the, the backlight kit for me to check out. I will go ahead and link to their listing down in the description uh, if you want to check out what they've got regarding uh, shells and the backlight kits. Um, unfortunately, as far as I know, there is no laminated version of any of the backlight kits for DMG. But if there were to be one, Cloud Game Store is the most likely candidate to make one. Uh, but the problem is the volume on original Game Boy and like Game Boy Pocket stuff is pretty low. Um, obviously, it's not low enough that they didn't want to make their own customized kits and housings. Uh, but you know, once you move into laminated stuff, you're you're taking a niche of a niche of a niche and hoping for the best you can recoup your costs. Um, like I said, they're the most likely to do one. I've already talked to Funny Playing about it. Uh, they are just wholly not interested. Uh, so anything else you see is, is like custom aftermarket of aftermarket. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there because I'm sure it's going to come up. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll catch you all next time. Quick update, I noticed while um, I was getting ready to upload the video to YouTube, uh, pushing this button while you're not in the OSD does actually do something, same as when you turn it on. There's a little bar up at the top of the screen. Let me get into the game here. I placed the battery and reflashed it. Um, there we go. It's black up there. When you hit the button, you see there's that bar that comes up. That's a battery meter. Neat stuff. I didn't realize that. And you see that when you turn the thing on, too. That was when I noticed it. Um, yeah, forgot to talk about that. Well, I guess I didn't really realize that, would, that it was a feature, but there you go. Neat stuff. Anyway, now I'm out of here. Catch you all next time.